You're watching the Hello Chambers on TVC News. I am Jesu Adiri. The Nigerian Senate has constituted a committee to probe why President Muhammadu Buhari did not ascend to 19 out of 35 constitution review bills transmitted by the National Assembly. The President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, said this in his opening remark at the resumption of plenary after the general election. The President of the Senate commended President Buhari for assenting to 16 bills but he promised to engage the presidency on why the remaining nine bills were denied presidential assent. For the 19 bills that Mr. President did not sign, did not assent to, I believe that there is need for us to do further engagement between the National Assembly and the executive arm of government. We will constitute, I think we already have our constitutional review committee, to engage the executive arm of government. I don't know whether it will be the office of the uh, attorney general or the executive maybe constitute a small committee. Let's go through the, the items, the, those bills that have not been assented to. What are the issues? Are those issues issues that we can deal with immediately? Because we are putting a lot of resources, a lot of time to produce those bills. And I believe that Maybe there are a few explanations that could be made, and then they will be okay. And we will do that almost immediately because time is of essence. We shouldn't think that the time is too tight. I think even if it is one day that we have left, we should do our best. Where the issues are too much to handle, I think the next assembly, the 10th National Assembly, uh, should be able to, uh, to attend to, uh, to such issues. The House of Representatives has stepped down a bill seeking to decriminalize the use of cannabis in the country. Lawmakers also taxed the Central Bank of Nigeria to immediately direct commercial banks to overhaul their online and electronic banking services to online transactions. My colleague, Joke Adisa, brings us the report. A motion of urgent public importance on the absence of some critical infrastructure at the Inamdi Azikwe International Airport opened Thursday's legislative business. The dysfunctionality of the escalators and lift operate as a major setback to free movement of air travelers and causes serious inconveniences. Three bills on the use and legalization of cannabis consolidated into one took the better time of legislative hours. This House spokesman Benjamin Carlo leads the debate on the bill aiming to decriminalize the use of cannabis for medicinal purposes. It also seeks to empower the NDLEA to issue licenses and regulate the use of the banned substance. Here is the summary of uh, this bill to amend the existing act to enable NDLEA have the sole power of approving or withdrawing licenses for cannabis meant for medicinal purposes. But the opposition that grades the bill stifles it. A research has not been conducted authoritatively in this country to satisfy that cannabis can cure cancer. No research in Nigeria has authenticated that. This bill is inherently contradictory. It speaks from both sides of the mouth. At the end of the day, which aspect of the bill are we passing? You need to go around here, town, we say, just behind uh, SAS division. If you are around that, if they are in the evening, the people you see them there, all they are going there is to buy drugs. After several contributions, the bill was stepped down to allow for further consultations. The House is worried by the many troubles being faced by the citizens over CBN's latest cashless policy. It calls on the Apex Bank to prevail on money deposit banks to overhaul their online banking services for efficiency. Use of online or internet banking services by Nigerians in the past three months or thereabout has been characterized by varying degrees of hitches ranging from unsuccessful electronic bank transfers, point of sale, POS, service failure and a host of others. 
the House of Representatives wants the Independent National Electoral Commission to review the just concluded general election and come up with further amendments to the Electoral Act to enhance the credibility of the process. I wish to thank the Chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission and all the staff of the Commission for their hard work and commitment to ensuring free and fair elections across the country. I wish to also express my gratitude to the men and women of the security agencies who ensured the worst predictions of crisis and conflict did not come to pass. Any objective assessment of these elections will show marked improvements from prior outings. This is not to suggest perfection, but to acknowledge evident progress in our collective efforts to ensure elections we can all be proud of. Amendments to our, national, our nation's electoral laws by the legislature pronouncements by the judiciary, and operational reforms by the Electoral Commission have significantly improved elections in Nigeria since 1999. The amendments to the Electoral Act by the Ninth National Assembly have been particularly instrumental in improving the elections process through the use of technology tools to facilitate voter accreditation and transmission of results. With each new election season, we become more aware of areas requiring changes to ensure a better outing next time. As the race for the Senate presidency gains momentum in the National Assembly, Senator Aji Uzokalu, representing Abia North, says he is most qualified to occupy the exalted position of the third citizen in Nigeria. He appealed to the All Progressives Congress to zone the Senate presidency to the southeast. The senator, however, acknowledged that no democracy is perfect, but emphasized the need to amend the 1999 constitution to make room for electronic voting. The question is whether will I run? Yes, I'm ready to run for senate president if the party zone it to my zone, because the party is supreme. Whether they want to zone it, they should zone it to my village so nobody will contest it against me. <laughs> I don't even want them to zone it to the south. The party should zone it to Iberi in my ward. So, because I'm the only senator from there. You can manufacture another senator from another local government or from another place in Abia. So, I would like the party to zone it to me with my name. If they can do that, it will be very good because uh, President Tinibu needs uh, people of high character to turn around this economy, to make sure that we work for the masses and make laws that will enable him to turn around the economy. I'm going to be honest with you. If we practice true democracy, I should not be in contest with anybody in this position. Because apart from the Senate President himself, Deputy Senate President Mogage, the Senate Leader Gobie, I'm the highest ranking member of the Senate. Uh, no election is perfect. We have some lapses, we have some this is, but we must move on. People that are calling for interim government, this and that, they are wasting their time because we have practiced democracy. Democracy in India is the same, democracy in America is the same. There is no democracy that is perfect. I think have done the job they can do. It's left for us as lawmakers to tighten the nose. Wherever there is mistake, we go back to uh, amendments. I want you journalists to promote where there were lapses in the election so we can be able to do it. I mean. Uh, we cannot because there is a problem here and there. We say our democracy should be in jeopardy. No, it's not true. So, uh, President Tinibu, I want to assure you, we stand firm in giving good governance. One, he will also stand firm with this 10th Assembly to amend the Constitution. He will have the courage to amend the Constitution. What I, will, what I would like to see with my colleagues is for us to go for electronic voting. So that we are people like in India, it might not be automatic by electricity, it might be manual. You just punch the button, so nobody is doing anything with paperwork or this and that. That would be a thing of history. We would like to insert it in the electoral law that people can vote by just punching any political party you need. But it might be manual, it might not be electric, uh, uh, electronically done. So uh, for me, no election is perfect. Even my late friend and brother, President Umaru Yaradua, he confessed that the election that brought him was not perfect. And I'm sure President Tinibu is talking about fairness, 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 fairness. I'm sure President Tinibu 
in conjunction with us, we'll be able to address this matter because we will address it squarely because this country is our country and we have no other country to go to than this. We must do everything within human rights to make sure that we address the issue of economy, we address the issue of electoral processes, we address the issue of police, we address the issue of army. We have to address this. Either we fund them well or we, we, we know what to do to move this is forward. Another contender for the office of the Senate President is Senator Baral Jabrin, representing Kano North Senatorial District in the National Assembly. Senator Jabrin also feels he is the most qualified to become the next Senate President. He says he is the only one with the best legislative experience and requirements for the job. Congratulations, distinguished in your re-election. Thank you very much. Set the tone. How do you feel about coming back to the Senate being re-elected? Well, it's wonderful. I'm very, very happy, particularly uh, for the fact that our presidential candidate, uh, Senator Bola Ahmed uh, Tinubu, was able to uh, win the election despite the difficulties we faced. And uh, we were able to do very well in my zone, uh, particular, particularly in my state, to make sure that he won the election. And uh, I also came, despite the, um, uh, the challenges we faced from uh, the AMPP, the Kongosia group, I was able to uh, win the election to represent my people in the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So I'm, I'm glad, thank God, that uh, we were able to uh, uh, you know, uh, win the elections, both at the uh, national level and uh, in my central zone. Okay, we hear you are already seeking to, you know, ascend to the seat of the Senate President in the 10th Assembly. Tell us more about that and how do you hope to achieve that? Yes, um, that is correct. I made my intention known to uh, everyone yesterday. And the reason is because I feel I've garnered enough experience. Um, I'm a ranking senator. This is my... Uh, by June, by May, sorry, yeah, okay, by June, I'll, it will be my first fourth term, uh, fourth term to be in the National Assembly, making me um, the highest ranking among those who are aspiring to uh, lead the Senate in the 10th uh, National Assembly. Um, so I feel I've gotten the requisite experience, I've gotten the, you know, the necessary background, the expertise in terms of uh, uh, legislation uh, to lead the 10th Senate. So I'm ready, I'm good to go. But aren't you concerned about the zoning? Because you know already the presidency already has the Muslim Muslim ticket which has raised a lot of dust. Mm -hmm. Aren't you concerned that this may affect your chances? No, not at all. Um, because I believe that uh, uh, politics have to be played in a way that uh, you think of your success. Uh, I want my party to succeed. I want uh, uh, our president elect uh, to be uh, to, to run for two terms, to be uh, to spend two terms in government because I know what he did in, in Lagos. I uh, was able to change the economic fortunes of Lagos uh, to, a, to a state that has a very robust and sound economy, uh, which is an envy of all. Lagos has become an envy of all, not even within the country but uh, internationally. Uh, he wasn't able to do that in one term, he spent two terms and was able to achieve that feat. So I look forward to uh, making sure that uh, uh, he becomes two-term president. And you don't begin to plan for that, you know, at the tail end of uh, uh, the current or the administration is going to run for the first time. You begin to plan from now. Um, and I believe that um, my part of the country, um, despite all odds, you know, we came together to uh, give him the highest vote in this country. And uh, my plan is to galvanize uh, that you know, base uh, to make sure that uh, he doubles you know, that divorce he got in the 2027 election, God willing. And uh, my you know, aspiration to become the Senate President is, that, is, you know, is part of that plan. Is that, is part of that plan because we gave him the highest votes. Uh, I want to galvanize that base to make sure that uh, we double that vote, we double the votes that we give him. And when I become the Senate President, that will be made easier. And I will be in the forefront to make that happen. So I feel uh, there should be reward for performance. Uh, we perform very well, 
you know. My state in particular, we gave the uh, highest boost, uh, you know, second to Lagos. Um, and uh, when I become the Senate President, you know, the sky will be a limit in terms of uh, garnering more votes for Aswaja Amelie Wolatenbu. It's all about, he has good ideas. He has good plans for this country, but he needs to spend two terms to achieve that. So I feel we need to do this to galvanize the people where APC uh, has its strongest followership, all right, so as to make sure that we're able to make this happen in the 20, 2027 election. So, and I, I will certainly be part of that equation. And this, my aspiration, fits into the whole uh, equation, the whole formula. The legislature is immune to that kind of sentiment because it's somewhere that, you know, um, competence, competence is the key, you know, um, requirement, is the key fundamental in its operation. So you need to be competent. And when you talk about the Senate presidency, such sentiment does not come into play. All right? It doesn't come into play. It's only someone who has the, the, the wherewithal in terms of knowledge that can be a Senate president. And as you speak, I am the most experienced among those who are aspiring to lead the Senate in the Ten, uh, National Assembly. It's all about ranking, all right? And, uh, well, if you go about political expediency, that's talking about uh, uh, the, the political angle to it, I also, I'm also number one because I come to the northwestern part of this country where we gave the president the highest votes. And we are willing to double that effort. Do you now take your chances where you think you're going to gather more votes to make what happened in 2023 easier to happen in 2027? That is, to re-elect the president 2027. Do you take that chance and take it to somewhere where it might not really be... Yes, uh, useful. Yeah, she was so, saying it from that point of view. Yes. Nigerians mm -hmm. might see it, it might, might, you know, solidify their their thoughts mm -hmm. of, you know, plans to Islamize Nigeria. You know, there's already that factor on ground. So, how do you hope to demystify? We that? have gone beyond that sentiment. We have gone beyond that sentiment in this country. The key thing is the the senator, the uh, president elect said it. He said what is going to be. His, you know, watchword is competence. Is competence. You don't bring in, you know, sentiments where competence is needed. Or that we run into trouble. We've gone beyond that. The fact that we are accepted to take the candidature, to elect the candidature of Aswaja Ahmed Tinubu and Senator Shetima and get them voted and they became victorious in the election that just that was just concluded, has, 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 has collapsed that kind of uh, line of idea. So what is at play in this country, as you speak, in the political terrain is competence. And the earlier we handle that, the earlier we face the reality, the better for the country. Those kind of sentiments should go. You don't bring in sentiment where competence is the key fundamental. Well, it happened. And that's how we, oh, now, when you go to, for instance, you saw what happened, you know, during David Mark's era. He was a Christian, the Senate president, because he was the highest, highest ranking senator at that time. And then you had a Kweremadu, someone very, very vast, vast in terms of, uh, you know, when you talk about legislature, he's one of the uh, gurus in, in, in the era of legislation was the deputy Senate president. And then you have Patricia Ete. My colleague, when I was in the House of Reps, she was one of the founding you know, members of the House of Representatives in the Fourth Republic. We were together with her in 1999. Most qualified that time. She became the, the, the speaker. Nobody, 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 nobody said, why? Because we were the most qualified that time. So that is the situation for you. You don't bring that kind of sentiment into the legislature. Otherwise, we become a laughing stock within, you know, in the Committee of Nations. People begin to laugh at us. So we need to be serious with our democracy. As long as we, as long as we want our democ democracy to, 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 to be strong, then we know 
we have to go by the rules. And beside our rules, even it clearly stated that nomination shall be done in accordance with ranking. So ranking is very, very important. Very, very important in, 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 in the area of uh, legislation, in the, in the legislature as a whole. So you can compensate or you can do whatever, you can bring that political expediency, bring any other factor to play to, 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 to assuage such feelings. How about the zoning? Because I believe zoning... Well, we are... Okay, now, when you look at... Um, these, you know, the strongest, you know, the stronger base of uh, uh, of APC, you know, where you have, you know, the largest followership and then you win election at ease. You look at southwest, you look at northwest, you look at northeast and then north central. The northwest has a the Senate uh, has a the, the, the presidency, north northeast the vice presidency, the vice president comes from there. No central, you have uh, the, the, the chairman of the party. What do you think should go to the Northwest? Of course, the president of the Senate. Being where you have the largest chunk of the uh, votes that brought, uh, uh, that, that gave uh, Aswajo a victory. And we want to double that in 2027. That's what we are planning. We don't plan when we are close to, to the time. We are planning now, we started planning to give you more votes, all right? So I am the most qualified. Where do I go and tell my people if I don't aspire to become the Senate President of the Federal of Nigeria? What do I tell them if I want them to, to vote for Aswa Jabet in 2027? We have one of us, we have someone from you know, Northwest who is the most qualified. And these are people that are ready to give you more votes. So what else do you need? We wanted to be two-term president in this country, and this is the pathway to have that done. We realize that you require the support of your colleagues, yes. especially in the 10th National Assembly, sure. and not just the president-elect as we have it now. Sure, so sure. what level of um, outreach are you already making, oh, especially I, the fact that we are going mm, to have new faces yes. in the 10th Assembly? Yes, so have yes. you started reaching out? I've gone very, I've gone very far, very, very far, very, very far. Uh, I'm in touch with uh, my colleagues, uh, your care member. I hosted them for a luncheon after we were given our certificates of return. And uh, we'll be meeting, I'll uh, be meeting. Even before uh, we won the elections, um, uh, we had a forum, the APC uh, uh, Central Countries Forum. Uh, and I was the chairman. So we've been interfacing, we've been associating with, with uh, one another, and we've been giving ourselves support. And I was in forefront of that because, we, you know, it was a collective uh, kind of effort, but um, I was the chairman, you know what that means. So we've been working, we are uh, friends, and they understand the fact that uh, um, I will give them the, 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 the needed leadership in terms of uh, making uh, the 10th Senate more successful. Certainly, they are, they are, I'm with them and they are, I'm having their support. All right, Sister Grish, since you're very convinced that you are going to defy all sure, odds, sure. what is going to be your legislative agenda? Oh, that's wonderful. That's why I said I am going to make a formal declaration where I will, you know, roll out all these, uh, uh, what I have in stock, you know, uh, for the 10th Senate. But what I want to say is this, I've garnered the necessary requisite experience you know, uh, been around for quite a long time in the Senate because the legislature uh, is, you know, an institution where experience comes with uh, you've been there for a while. It's not somewhere you just come in like as a government, you come in and everything is just there for you. Um, you need to work uh, to, you know, get the necessary experience through your activities, you know, it's, it's not somewhere you just get something, you know, put on the table for you. You have to be taught, you have to learn, it's just like a school, all right? So, and uh, I've been able to do that. Uh, I'm well equipped, I've gathered the necessary experience, and uh, I'm just waiting, I'm good to go, by the grace of God. That is all we have for you on the program this week. Do join us again next week as we bring you the views of other contenders 
for the position of Senate President and Speaker. Thank you for watching. I am Tijesu Adewi. See you next time.